triangle proportionality theorem and its converse. We're at 7.4a in the geometry playlist with six previous videos just for chapter 7. Artists use mathematical techniques to make two-dimensional paintings appear three-dimensional. And the invention of perspective was based on the observation that faraway objects look smaller and closer objects look larger. Mathematical theorems like the triangle proportionality theorem are important in making perspective drawings. So take a look at this railway line drawing here and these telegraph poles. We have a horizon in the background and look there's a vanishing point and we know railway lines are parallel to each other but these are forming a triangle and these telegraph poles are getting smaller as they reach that vanishing point. That's perspective. And look at this rope bridge. This rope bridge is getting smaller as it gets farther away. And we can kind of see a triangle here, can't we? Well, these railway ties that are supporting the tracks are parallel to each other. And that's going to be important about what we're going to talk about in this video. Linear perspective needs three things. It needs parallel lines, horizon line, and a vanishing point. So it needs parallel lines like these railroad tracks and these railroad ties. It needs a horizon line in the background and a vanishing point. And we can draw a house with a vanishing point. And when we draw the three lines coming out of the vanishing point, we can put the side of the house so it's got perspective. And then you put this part facing us, see? So the triangle proportionality theorem says if a parallel line to a side of a triangle like EF intersects two other sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. So now it's dividing these proportionally. And because line EF is parallel to segment BC, we've got this little part AE over EB is equal to AF over FC. We can find the length of a segment CY or YC and taking a look at the drawing, we can see that XY is parallel to BC. We see the parallel marks. And we see this is a 4, that's a 9, that's a 10, but that's blank. We don't know what that is. So it's given that XY is parallel to BC. And because of that, we can say AX, this 9, over XB, this 4, is equal to AY, this 10, over YC, whatever that is. And we have to make sure if we're making that the numerator, then that's got to be the numerator, okay? So that they're corresponding. So we put the 9 over the 4 equals 10 over the CY, substituting in the values, and we can do the cross products property. We can do 9 times CY is equal to 4 times 10. 4 times 10 is 40, and we can divide both sides by this 9 to solve for CY, and we know it's equal to 4 and 4 ninths. You could also probably leave it as 40 ninths if you want to, okay? So we know this little section here now. Now the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem, if you remember, a converse swaps the hypothesis and the conclusion of the other theorem, okay? So this one said if these, because these lines are parallel, then they're proportional. This one's going to say because they're proportional, the lines are parallel, okay? So it says if a line divides two sides of a triangle proportionally, then it's parallel to the third side. And we can verify that segment MN is parallel to segment KL. We want to make sure we've got these in the correct order with corresponding sides. So we can start with J and make the 42 the numerator over the 21. Then we can do the 30 as the numerator over the 15 so that they're in the right place, okay? When we do the math, we find out that this one is a 2 and that one is a 2. They're the same. They're proportional. And since the JM over MK is equal to the JN over NL, we can say MN is parallel to KL by the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. Okay? This is construction of the triangle proportionality theorem. We're going to construct a line parallel to the side of a triangle. So we're going to use a straight edge first to draw triangle ABC. And actually, you'd be better off if you made a taller triangle. It was a little hard for me because I made this one kind of short, okay? 
it didn't have a very high altitude. So you can draw any triangle you want, but my advice is when you do this the first time, try drawing a taller triangle because it'll be easier, okay? We're going to label a point on AB. We're going to label it E, okay? And you can put it anywhere you want, but keep in mind we're trying to recreate this or this, okay? Or something like this. So now that we've got point E, we construct angle E so that it is congruent to angle B. So we want an angle here that's congruent to this angle here. If you don't remember how to do that, we'll go over it real quickly, but to construct congruent angles, that was video 1.3, and you might want to watch that because you're going to need that in geometry, okay? So we're going to construct this angle E, and the way we do it is we take our compass, and because mine's so short, I had to do a very small setting, and you put the point on B, and you make an arc that goes through segment AB and BC. You want it to go through both lines, okay? Then I take my compass and I measure that distance. Once I get that distance set, don't move your compass, put your point on E and make an arc that goes through AB and intersects it and comes down a bit below E, okay? So you're going to make this arc here. Once you've got that arc made, put your point where that new intersection is and make a little arc there. Then you're going to take your straight edge and you're going to make a line going through E and that intersection all the way through. Now we've created point F. We can label the intersection of line EF and AC as F. And because line EF is parallel to BC, by the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. See? So we made a line parallel to BC. So that theorem says if a line divides two sides of a triangle proportionally, then it's parallel to the third side. Okay. Our next lesson is going to be about the two transversal proportion proportionality corollary. That's 7.4b. Then we're going to do triangle angle bisector theorem 7.4c. So this is the second part of our lesson, and that's the third part of our lesson. So you should watch both of those before we move on to the next lesson, okay? So try practicing this. You want to get good with a compass. And now you know about a little bit, at least, about Brunelleschi and linear perspective. And try clicking on that link because you can even search Google for linear perspective, and you'll see art before linear perspective was used and how strange it looks and then afterwards how much more realistic it looked. And some very famous artists like Donatello used Brunelleschi's technique. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.